What is up everyone? So today I'll be playing some Mono Ghost, which is one of the last of the few types I have left to play in that decks before I gonna either loop around or play some Generation 9. Uh, however, this type has been quite a contentious one, as a lot of people think this type is amazing. A lot of people think this type is quite bad and heavily nerfed. I was on the fence for a while until I started playing this type and realized, yeah, this type is pretty solid. I don't think it's necessarily the best in the game. I don't even think it's contender for top 5, if I'm being honest, but it's definitely in the top half of the tier list. Um, with that out of the way, this pretty fun team today, I definitely took the Grass, Fire, Water Core. You see a lot in like Generation 4 and stuff compared to Generation 3 competitive. And I tried to apply that to Ghost here and definitely is quite unique, I think. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into the team. So first up we have Bramblegast, which might surprise some people to see like why is Bramblegast on the team, but it's honestly pretty okay. With um, Rocky Helmet, it's quite nice to punish any physical attackers. It can also strength sap all that HP back and while reducing the opponent's attack stats. We do have Wind Rider to increase your speed attack a stage and be immune to things like um, Blizzard, Heat Wave... Hurricane, all that kind of good stuff, but honestly, you can also infiltrate too if you're worried about subsets. I kind of wanted to try Wind Rider just to see if I can get it working, but ultimately, I think Infiltrator is probably the slightly better ability here. However, uh, stat wise, we are max HP, max speed. Now, the stats are honestly kind of poor 55 base HP is terrible, and base 90 H speed is like okay but the main thing in this team member is it's a very much team support mon with rapid spin which is very important because a lot of my team does not like hazards does not like sticky web or spikes or toxic spikes or any of that kind of nasty stuff so rapid spin is very nice now more importantly it has spikes spikes are so good in this team because paired with ghost like gellar's uh, stealth rocks we can hazard stack a lot and goldenko completely blocks attempts from mortal spin rapid spin defog the only thing in the game that can remove these hazards would be tidy up on um mouse hold but i'm not too aware of mouse hold in general so we don't see that too often in the ladder so spike and stealth rock spike stacking is really good to apply offensive pressure on my opponent's team and finally the infestation just to get that little bit of chip and it kind of force traps them in i can continuously spike them or continuously strength sap their other hp back or reducing their attack which is quite good for the team Next up of course lot, it's a pretty standard course lot. It's gonna be Spadef HP could course lot with Eviolite. So this thing is very bulky and has plenty of options to do with physical attackers, mainly thanks to Will Wisp and Strength Sap. So there's not too much explanation needed there. Wisping, spreading burns is very important to try and reduce my opponent's attack stat, as well as using a tiny bit of chip damage, which all adds up slowly with stealth rocks and spikes, that kind of stuff. So that's quite nice. Strength Sap is there for much the same reason the Bramble Gas to give it longevity and to kind of force swap out to my opponent and increasingly stacking my spikes and stealth rock damage. Nightshade is nice because I don't have to invest anything into my physical attacks or any attacking stat and still do a clean 100 damage. It's pretty decent against most Pokemon and that's kind of like between 30, 25 to 35 percent damage, which is respectable considering we have absolutely no uh, investment into any attack stats. And of course we have Stealth Rock there, which I just described in detail is to hazard stack the damage as much as possible. Curse Body is also way better than Weak Armor. Do not use Weak Armor. Use Curse Body. It can be great against Choice Lock opponents. It can force a Disable on them, forcing them to swap out, and yet again, force hazard stack damage kind of the name of the game in this team hazard stack damage and then clean up later in the game with my four offensive pokemon who are these mimikyu is so important i tried using a non-mimikyu ghost team trust me it does not work please if you're running ghost use mimikyu it's so important disguise is a busted ability um, please just use my um pun there so disguise is busted it's amazing it's so good it's attack stat is like mediocre base 90 with life orb it patches it up nicely enough so it's relatively powerful not amazing but but it hits hard enough so that's pretty good swords dance however does patch that up meaning this thing hits pretty hard after an sd and it has solid coverage in play rough and shadow sneak Fairy Ghost is also just a really good offensive type. There's very little that resists both of these. And we, of course, have Drain Punch for longevity. Also good for hitting Steel types in the tier and hitting the very important Dark matchup, which is quite scary. Now, Player of obviously also hits Dark types, but Drain Punch is a tiny bit more reliable in a 10 base accuracy. And it hits things like Tower Tower for four times effective damage or like Bisharp as well, which is very nice. Goldengo is the next member of the team. 
Goldengo is more of a like bulky offense, and the reason I want bulky Goldengo, I want this thing to live as long as possible to try and continuously block defog attempts so my opponent is forced to take hazard damage every time it swaps in. So the max HP with leftovers makes this thing decently bulky because it has a respectable 95-91 uh, defensive stat line. And with max special attack, it hits back super hard as well. Especially per nasty plot, it can be a fantastic wall breaker with shadow ball for reliable stab. Uh, make it rain is extremely powerful. Now, unfortunately, it does lower my special attack by a stage. Not ideal, but you can make up with that more than likely with a uh, nasty plot. And finally, Dazzling Gleam is there for... Um, hitting for dark types in the tier which otherwise give my team obviously a lot of trouble so in case people are confused why i'm talking about this thing blocking defog so much is because it has good as gold as an ability which completely blocks any status moves this is probably the best ability in the game in my opinion it's so good and i don't mean just status moves like toxic or will wisp or thunder wave i mean any status move that makes a target so defog trick switcheroo pain split Anything that would target the opponent is completely blocked, which is insanely, insanely good. So yeah, it's steel typing also blocks mortal spins, so poison types will have a hard time removing their hazards as well. Just across the board, probably the best hazard denier in the game, or hazard removal denier in the game. Fantastic. Next up, we have Blacephalon. I've tried a few different Scarf users, but I think Blacephalon is just so good thanks to Beast Boost, increasing its special attack a stage every time it gets a KO. And with its very respectable base 107 speed with Choice Scarf, this thing is getting plenty of KOs, especially paired with its monstrous 151 special attack. So every KO plus one special attack, it goes to 600 to 800 to 1000 pretty fast and can be a snowballing nightmare for your opponent. Again, you're sick of hearing me say this, but especially with Hazard chip damage it puts things in perfect range of blacephalon moose that wise you have shadow ball uh, again reliable stab against anything that's not normal or dark type we have flamethrower which is good for a lot of other matchups in the tier as well as being stab it's quite nice hits steel type super effectively steel is not the worst matchup in the game but steel is never a good matchup necessarily for most types so hitting steel type super effectively is quite good side shock is there to hit any like super especially defensive walls uh, like assault vest users or just generally high uh, special defense pokemon it's also very good for poison types which can give my team honestly a little bit of trouble once you dispatch their muck or their skunk tank or drop you on or overcoil whatever they might be using side shot goes crazy then in the light game and can really pick up a lot of ko's uh, next up we have trick trick is nice as well to kind of get rid of more bulky teams uh, say like a Toxapex or a Moongus who might want to swap in on you and try regen core spam you. Tricking them a Choice Scarf really, really cripples them and they cannot do most of their tanking ability or wall in ability for the rest of the game. Which is quite nice because my team, it can lose a bit to tanks too much like tanking or stall teams. So having Trick there can be quite nice. And last but not least, we have Basque Legion. So Basque Legion is a very fun set. With adaptability, it's going to hit super, super hard doesn't necessarily hit super fast like 255 is respectable which is why we have agility here so it can patch up its mediocre speed to be quite good as a late game sweeper again i'm sorry i have to say it again hazard stacking damage is super important for basket legion to secure important ko's so with agility you can patch this up to be a great late game sweeper it has respectable attack with 112 but more importantly adaptability will increase its water attacks to double effective a double stab so essentially wave crash will be 240 base instead of 180 which is crazy powerful aqua jet instead of being 60 base is 80 base which is again super super nice we also have what tyranny mz for wave crash do an extremely powerful hydro vortex it's just absolutely demolishes most non-resists in the tier any of the bulkiest walls probably go down to an adaptability z water move here Head Smash is also there mainly for Volcanion and some Dragon types in the tier that would be part flying type that would be hit super effectively from Head Smash. But Volcanion would otherwise wall this thing out pretty nastily, so Head Smash is good. Unfortunately, it does not have any good uh, Ghost stab moves except um, Last Respects. Of course, Last Respects is banned for being the most broken move in the series, in my opinion. Um, but we have Phantom Force as well. Not great, it has a two turn effect, so your opponent can easily like kind of play around that and work around what you're going to go into though if you really want to run it you can because it's nice to stall out like 
uh, things like um, terrain, things like screens, um, weather, all that kind of stuff. So it gives you that extra turn. It also does break protection, which is nice against kind of uh, scouting teams that want to protect a lot. So Phantom Force is usable because it is boosted by adaptability. Personally, I like Head Smash that little bit more. This is kind of an all or nothing Pokemon. And if you want to go crazy, you can also run Z Rain Dance to get your rain up and it also boosts your speed of stage. So it's kind of like a partial adaptability while also boosting the power of your next water move. However, I will warn you, the rain is temporary. If you swap out, you lose your speed boost. And of course, the rain does not pair nicely with Flamethrower or Blacephalon. So just be warned if you want to go down that route. So with that out of the way, I have to ask you before I start the battles, what is your favorite ghost type Pokemon introduced in Generation 9? For me, it's probably Bramblegast. I really like it. It's a tough call not to say Seraledge because Seraledge is very cool too. I use Seraledge in my in-game playthrough and I think it's a fantastic design. But I have to say Bramblegast for some reason kind of gets the edge for me. Honestly, Basque Legion is fantastic too. A lot of good ghost type introduced in this generation. So, But just something cool about like a tumbleweed ghost and I thought... Seeing it roll around in like the main game and like Scarlet and Violet was super cool too. So with that all out of the way, let's jump into some games. So our first game here is against Mono Dragon. It can definitely be a tough matchup now. Of course, I definitely value Corsola a lot in this game. They might go for Clang or Soul Blaze. Let's go Mimikyu. It's a Flash Cannon. Good play. Very good play. But honestly, I think the value of them breaking my disguise is not equal to the value of them getting an Omni Boost. The Omni Boost is definitely too scary for me. Okay, they go Hydreigon. They are faster than me. I think I'll play rough here anyway. Getting rid of this is super good for my team. It kind of allows Corsola to go crazy. Just walling out a ton of their team. They Drake on me. Fantastic. Such a fantastic Pokemon to get rid of. I can go Corsola here. Assuming they're not sub, I don't fear them. Dual Wing Beast is honestly pretty strong, but not strong enough. Don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch, don't flinch. Ah, That sucks. And in all those hits, we didn't even get a cursed body, and they got one flinch. That's nasty for me, actually. I guess... Yeah, that's such a huge loss. I still value Mimikyu a lot. I guess Placephalon has to come in and Shadow Ball. Like Shadow Ball into Shadow Sneak or even Shadow Ball into Aqua Jet KOs. I'll sack Bramble here. They have to make contact. And I get to keep my Placephalon alive, which is good because it's still pretty strong against their team. Let's go Gold here. Dragonite comes in. I'm kind of afraid... You could be weakness policy. I guess I... Mm, do I value Goldengo? I kind of do for Dazzling Gleam. I guess I don't value Basculagian much in this game. Uh-oh. That's not good. Obviously, I don't live one. Mimikyu does. Of course, unless they're dueling beat. They won't miss, though. I'll miss. I'm going to hit right here. Oh, nice. It connected. That's pretty good for me. And I think, I think I keep this alive, right? It outspeeds Komo. Uh, I guess it depends what set Latte is. If I was to guess, it's Mega, Mega Calm Mind, Mega Psychic. We live with one. Wow. It all comes down to Goldengo, right? Which loses to flamethrower spam from these two dragons. I'll play rough here. Like Hydro Steam. Oh, I'm faster. And Chris, fantastic. So thick hand, Omni Boost. If play rough hits, which it did, amazing for me. I guess I didn't have such bad luck in this game. It played out nicely enough for me. The flinch on Corsola really hurt, but. I managed to make through with Mimikyu all the same. Kind of surprised it's not max speed walking wake. Maybe it's like bulky walking wake. Either way, we'll take those. So we have a game here against Mono Psychic. Blacephalon's very good in this game, but I have to worry about Zam and honestly Gallade too. 
I'll open up with gold Dengo, expecting them maybe to want to open up Deoxys. So this kind of forces them to either Spikes or Psycho Boost. I'm going to Shadow Ball right away. I'm okay with them getting a few layers of Spikes down. I can always spin again on Slowbro. Hmm. Yeah, they want their Spikes down. I guess that's fine with Shadow Ball here. Spikes aren't the end of the world for me. Especially as long as I have Corsola healthy. For stuff like Gallade and Victini. Now if Victini comes in, I'm going to call that it's Z-Celebrate. I'm going to Shadow Ball outright. I'm not going to mess around and swap it into Corsola. I've made that mistake before in testing and uh, if I get hit, it's pretty strong. If Victini comes in, I'm going to straight up Shadow Ball you. I do not care if he's the celebrate. I feel like, honestly, Golden goes in its part. Yep. I knew it. I know one when I see one. 65 is pretty good. They either Searing Shot or Stored Power. Yeah, I'll sack this. Oh, they missed Fire Blast. That's actually pretty big for me. That's pretty big RNG. I'm going to Shot a Ball again. This is Mega Mega Knockoff, if I was to assume. Oh. It's Sharpness? Hey, I, I, that's pretty good. I could go Hard Bramble right now. And just KO it with Rocky Helmet. But then I'm playing with Hazards down. Do I care about that? I guess not really. Yeah. Is it Mega Zam? Either way, I'll go Bramble Gas and sack this. And now we go... Placephalon. Into their Lele, great Shadow Ball KOs. If they're Mega Zam, I just win. If they're Sash Zam, I just have to... Ooh, that lived actually. That's surprising. Either way... I got rocks up here. If all I have to do is stall out their psychic terrain turns, that's fine. And if I got rocks up here, they can't come back in later. I'm kind of surprised they did a shadow ball. Like, the Cephalon's really strong. I can't tell if that specs or scarf. I, I really can't tell. Okay, it's disabled. That's pretty good for me. Because that lets me. Uh, I'll set up Agility here. And they die to struggle. Now they're obviously going to take in their Slowbro. But that's fine, because all I need to do is stall out their turns, right? Until I get Mimikyu in. And win with Shadow Sneak? I think. Well, Hydro Vortex. Not going to KO, but does it maybe 40? 37. Close enough. T-Wave comes out. I'm just going to Wave Crash till I die. Because Gold Dengo outspeeds this and kills it. They teleport into Zam. I jet here, break its potential sash. If it's Mega, also okay, because a Shadow Snake kills. Nice. Cool. So, I can just Shadow Snake here. I guess they go into Bro, right? It's doing a lot, though. Nice. Close game, though. Close game. There was a while I took off Mimikyu off this team to try other ghosts, but to be honest, it just doesn't work. You need Mimikyu on a ghost team. It's it's such a good Pokemon for this matchup. Either way, let's look for another game. So we have a game here against Mono Electric. This could be a tough matchup. I think I value Bramblegast a lot here. Uh, I'm going to open up Corsola. They go into Zero Aura. I want to try and burn this turn one, just in case they knock me off here. They could be banded, they could be bulk up, I'm not sure. They are knock off, we disable it. Please hit. Fantastic. I'll strength up here. I would like to get my HP back. Now, assuming this isn't like knock off or something, I mean, pain split or toxic, I'm okay to just get my rocks up. They could defog, but what I'm going to do here is start applying damage. 
with Nightshade. Sandy Shocks comes in. I think Bramble Gas is a pretty free swap. Earth Power is not doing too much. It is faster than me. I'll Strength Sap once. Just to try and get some HP back. Probably not a lot. Yeah, 48 is pretty good. We'll spin. Now the question is, do I... Mm, crit's nice. I think I value spikes here. Two layers down would be fantastic. T-Bolt comes out. I'll Strength Sap one more time. Now it's of course diminishing returns. Um, I get my second spike down. Because right now, Bascule Legion is pretty good. It KOs this with Aqua Jet, so it forces this out. And nothing on their team like particularly likes taking Banded Aqua Jet. Even this, 12% is not bad. Eh, it did nothing because it recovers back with leftovers. You Earth Power here, I'll Shadow Ball. Hey, they Stealth Rock. Cool. Getting rid of that is not bad for my team. By any stretch of the imagination. Now, of course, Aleki is strong. Aleki is scary. But as long as I have these up, I am passively applying pressure to it. I fought this team before on ladder. And I believe Coco is uh, like dual screen support with Taunt and... I think I've got a U-turn or Volt Switch. Honestly, I still value Basque Legion a lot in this game. You can knock here. Or Black Hole Eclipse. Z bulk up. Ooh, scary. That sounded sarcastic, but that was genuinely scary. Thankfully, it does to burn. Lecky comes in. I feel like Volt Switch and Rising Volt Switch don't KO. Thunder does, right? Thunder doesn't. No full para as well. Excellent. Now I don't particularly care about stealth rocks and spikes. They were kind of only there to slowly chip away the Regilecki. They end up forfeiting anyway. Hey, pretty nice matchup. I still have my Basque Legion in the back, which was surprisingly strong. Hydro Vortex was going to absolutely destroy Iron Hands. It's going to do a decent chunk to Tapu Koko as well. Rotom was still a bit of a thorn in my side, but I think Blacephalon is looking better and better in the end game now. We're back again with some Mono Psychic. It's funny, I never see Mono Psychic on the ladder. All of a sudden, I'm seeing it a lot. Either way, we're going to open up with Bramblegast against their Deoxys defense, because they probably want to try and set up here. So what I'm going to do is infest them to stay in. If they taunt, it's kind of annoying. That's just what I wanted. I'm going to spike once. Psycho boost. Does a lot, actually. If we sap, I think we live one more. Yeah, we live. Ooh, teleport. Interesting. Hmm. They port into Gallade here. I'll go Corsola. I don't actually value Corsola too much in this game, except for Gallade. Do I value rocks down? I'm going to Strength Sap once. Again, just in case they want to stay in. I mean, they're probably not going to, especially after I hit them with a minus... Or I disabled, sorry. This is fine. We'll rock up here. It's recover. Okay. Nightshade? Now they could port out again. Psycho boost won't do too much. I think they teleport here, but they might recover. So that's Nightshade again. Keep this nice and low. Actually, they die to rock spike coming back in. Unless they defog away with something like Articuno. You come back in, I'm going to strength slap you again. <laughs> I love this Curse Body. Curse Body is actually such a good ability. We Wisp here. Deoxys, you die coming back in. I'm going to Wisp just because I like the passive damage on something. Uh, I am not taking any chances for you defogging. I do not want you to defog. Calm Mind is bad. You go down. That's fine. Yeah, I guess I keep Bramblegast alive, right? To try and spin these rocks away at some stage. They're not the end of the world for me. I can live with them. I'm also surprised Gallade is just clicking Psycho Cut. I take care of you, actually. I think I value you being dead. Yeah, nice. Now, Necrozma is 
actually a huge threat to my team. With prism armor, it could easily be weakness armor, or sorry, weakness policy like prism armor autotomize. So I'm going to click make it rain here, just because I don't want to activate any anything crazy right now. 74. That sucks. But hey, if you make contact, you're dead to Bramblegast. I don't know if they go for like a knock here or something. Earthquake. I live. I'll try spin here. Okay. I'm fast triple cephalon. I click shadow ball. You go down. You go down. Uh, Slow King probably lives, but not great after rock spike. I think Articuno goes down too. I think you live. You could earthquake, I suppose. But right now, you realistically don't have a Basculage in Mimikyu answers. Even if you're Sneak Gallade, you go down after Rock Spike. Oh, you go down anyway. So you're not Vest. You go down, and of course, Articuno goes down. Another game claimed by Blacephalon. This thing is such a good late game sweeper. I really, really enjoy it. I enjoy this team in general, to be honest. Basque Legion is surprisingly good. Uh, Bramble Gas is like not amazing, but I think it's important team support all the same. So we have a game against Spew. Spew is an amazing, amazing monotype player. Uh, one of the best not dex players around, I feel, for quite a while now. So I definitely have my work cut out for me here. Again, I think I value opening up with Corsola. Trying to get my rocks down as early as possible is just nice for me. They do have a defogger in Rotom. I don't care about that too, too much. Now, of course, they could go Aleki here. I'll go Goldengo on this. Stop any defog attempts early on. Pump is strong. We Shadow Ball. We live one more pump. And it should put it in range of Blacephalon pretty soon, actually. Huh? So you're not Boots. Interesting. Okay. We take Zapdos. I'm happy with that. Ideally, I keep this alive for Rotom. Yeah, Aleki is a threat, right? Do I value Bramblegas? It kind of has a similar role as Corsola in this game, so no, I guess not is the answer. Are we actually going to live a Volt Switch? Which is good for me. So that's not Specs, based on the damage. Raichu comes in. I am, of course, slower. I'll try to get a Spike down. It's pretty cheeky. They shouldn't let me. And they do let me. Now, of course, they can always defog. Maybe defog on Zapdos, though. Okay, that looks to be specs based on that damage. Either way, we're slowly damaging Red Lecky Raichu. Which I really value. And am I faster than... Than this? Stealth Rock. Rotom used Hydro Pump. Rotom used Vault Switch. Okay, so the Rotom is faster. Honestly... I'm going to jet you right now. It didn't kill. Ah, nasty. Though it puts it in range of Mimikyu. Which I like as well. It made the end game a little bit tougher. I'm not going to lie, because now Iron Hands is kind of a threat. Um, I'll play rough here. I value damage on this. Because if I put it in range of... Blacephalon, I could win that way. Now, I do need to keep this alive, I believe, for Raichu. Hmm. This endgame is actually quite tough. I sack gold here. They T Vault, I go Blacephalon, I. I click Flamethrower. Okay. They're going to go Iron Hands. Ah, this is a tough end game. I think it's... Okay, they went Coco. I flame here. You go down. Raichu comes in. It dies to a Shadow Sneak. So I sack this. I take in Mimikyu. I click Shadow Sneak. It dies. And I think... Play Rough should take care of Iron Hands. Please connect. Please hit here and not here. If you hit here, I might lose. If you hit here, I might win. 
not over. Yes. Hmm. Ah, please connect here. I'm pretty sure life orb. Yeah, this kills right. No, it lives. Lowering the attack. That is huge for me. I'm just gonna nightshade. Yeah, thunder punch. Crazy <laughs> chaos. Oh no. No. <laughs> I just needed a nightshade. The reason I didn't strength sap is because I knew there's a potential where I died to that with a crit. Crazy. It's funny. I mean, I, I I can't deny it. That's just how you lose this game, but I think I played well. I think I played well. It's just, you can't beat RNG like that, so it's pretty funny. I take it in my stride. Let's pause right there and be right back. Alrighty, here we are against Mono Dragon. Tough matchup. I mean, honestly, Roaring Moon is so scary for my team, and so is Gudra. I don't value Basket Legion a huge amount right now, which kind of sucks for me. Hmm. All rocks, but I might regret because if they sub, if they're sub with max HP, it is bad for me. Very, very bad. Yep, there's sub max HP. Literally what I needed not to be. I don't have an answer to this. Like, at all. I have to break it, I think, with gold. And then Mimikyu. Play rough. Mimikyu's strong in this game, actually. So we live a freeze dry. We should just live an earth power. Nice. I kind of feel like I sack... Basket Legion. No, it's still okay, actually. Yeah, because I just don't want this thing getting up any subs. Just, just no sub, please. Please no sub. Do sub to channel. Sub to channel. But cure him no sub. If you like this content, do what uh, Kyurem does right now and sub to me, please. Play Rough KOs. It's going to hit here. I've hit Play Rough way too many times today that it, it has to hit here. It's just laws of nature. But please connect. Because if it connects, I'm in a decent spot. I know, like, Rory Moon is still really hard for me. And Blacephalon is okay in this matchup, like, not amazing. Not bad, though. Far from bad. On Garchomp, I can always swap into Corsola, I guess. The suspense is killing me. Nice. Fantastic for me. Now, Gudra is kind of annoying. Altaria. I outspeed and I play rough. It doesn't KO. Crazy. We'll just do a cheeky sneak. Cheeky sneaky. Now if it's like Scarf, Roaring Moon, I might just lose anyway. I'm pretty sure I lose to Scarf, Roaring Moon. Garchomp comes in. Let's go Corsola and start sapping you. Earthquake does honestly a lot. So this needs to be healthy for... Roaring Moon. Unless I manage to get Agility up, which I don't really see an opportunity for me for do do so. Okay. Let's Wisp. Wisp being old chomp is good because uh, it makes it a significant bit less threatening. Dragon Tail me out. Disabled. Fantastic. What do I go into? Blacephalon. Not ideal. I want to go into Bramblegast. Gudra comes in. I'm getting my spikes down. Just because I kind of value as much chip as I can get against the Roaring Moon. And what I'm going to do here is spin away your annoying rocks. If I get a lot of chip down, and if it's Scarf, there is still a potential world where I win against Roaring Moon. With Placephalon. Ooh. That is a nasty set. Corsola comes in. We'll go back into Bramble here. Uh, how much should that do? 60, yeah, I can spin one more time. Or do I even care about spinning? Maybe I don't care about spinning. I think I care more about spikes. 
Again, the aim of the game here is to chip Gudra and Rory Moon as much as possible. Do I spin? <sighs> How much should... Yeah, no, because... I strength sap, actually. That's what I do. I get back to full HP. That's a better play, I think. Because even if they force me out here, Bramble is still healthy for later on. And if they force him to settle on, they don't, they force this in. We're going to go ahead and kill this. That means Rory and Moon can't come in for free right now. Which I like. Lati can kind of come in for free. Gudra, free enough, I suppose. But the question is, is there much Gudra can do against me? Huh. Did they disconnect or did they forfeit? Let me talk to my logic here. For your second from mine. If they take in Roaring Moon, I think I strength up in case they DD. Yeah. Ah. See, this is the deciding play. If I strength up here. Oh, they're Black Hole Eclipse. I lose. Yeah. That's game, right? Unless, like, Blissef into Mimikyu into Aqua Jet Chaos, but I don't think it does. So Blissef comes in, does, like, 20 or 30 at most, to be honest. And then Jet has to kill afterwards. I wasn't expecting that. Once I saw the Z-Crystal, I was like, uh-oh, I am dead. Okay... I don't know if that's the play I would have done. I think you might have given me a chance to win. Because you're going to take Rock and Spike Chip back as Roaring Moon. I lived that decently well. Oh, all I care to do here is Spike, right? Because the name of the game here is to get as much chip on Roaring Moon as possible. I go into this, we drain punch KO? Question mark? Honestly, I don't even know if Drain Punch has to KO. If it doesn't, it should put it in range of on Shadow Ball. And I think plus one Shadow Ball KOs Roaring Moon after two spikes in a rock chip. This game is winnable. I think this game is winnable. Maybe it depends what Latte set is. Yum, 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 yum. Some delicious HP. If they go Latte here... I Shadow Sneak. If they go Roaring Moon. Ah, oh, if they go Roaring Moon. And they Dragon Dance. No, right, because Bosque Legion and Sneak kill here, right? Don't Dragon Dance. Yeah, they Crunch. Does Flamethrower kill? Blasef, Choice Scarf versus Roaring Moon. We'll just say it's Dragon Dance. 22 to 27. Nope. Does Basque Legion kill? Uh, nope, that's Choice Band as well. <laughs> I'm not Choice Band. Jet does 11 to 13. So I think I go Blissef. And I Flamethrower. And that puts it in range of, of Aqua Jet, right? Now the question is, I don't think Latte even dies. So wave crash, if it's Z wave crash, even with adamant, no. Hydro vortex, no. I think I lose. Unfortunate. Unless in a weird world where Latte can't do a KO me. Oh, I, got I wave crash here. Yeah, Draco kills. Oh, crit? Did it crit? Whoa, it just kills. I don't understand how. GG. Oh, is this Swift Swim? Oh, I wasn't adaptability in the calc. 74 to 87. And I did 88. That's a high roll. But even still, a jet would have killed afterwards. Wow, I forgot to calc adaptability. Nice. We definitely take those. Let's pause right there. 
Alrighty, another mono dragon game. Another game I have to fight stuff like Roaring Moon, which is really bad for me. But however, Royale with Cheems is such a good name. That is a fantastic uh, username. We'll open course a lot here again. They open up a Gudra, kind of annoying for me, but not the end of the world because I'm getting my rocks up. Like always, I just want to hazard stack, hazard stack, hazard stack, and try and block with Goldengo if I can. Acid armor. I'm going to wisp you. I just kind of value a bit of passive damage here. But chances are they can't do much against me because they can't body press me, so it depends what their last move is Dragon Pulse. A very weak one at that. I'm going to wisp one more time. Okay, I thought they maybe swapped there. Time to spam my shit. Are they like rest is their last move? In which case, Mimikyu walls out indefinitely. And I would be more than happy to set up a ton of swords dances in your face. Okay, they're flash cannon, last move. So I disable that. Give me all your HP back. Let's go Mimikyu right now, because they can't hit me. Hmm. I guess I swords dance. <gasps> they're surf. That's bad for me, actually. I thought maybe they'd be iron press. Or, sorry, body press. Okay, I got a bit cocky there. Either way, we drain punch a decent back here. We get rocks down. Ah, that made the end game a lot harder for me, actually. Harder than it needs to be, to be honest. I'll sneak here. Just a bit of chip is okay. They jaw lock me. Let's go Corsola and try burn you. I'm okay fighting Komodo, I think. Please connect. Nice. So this one shouldn't KO me unless they got a high roll. Nice. Are you locked in from jaw lock? Are we both locked in? Prevents both users and target from switching out. Well, I can switch out. Because I'm a ghost type. And this seems like a prime opportunity to try and get my rocks down here. My spikes down. And I want to keep Crustle healthy for Komodo. Okay, they're DD. They're disabled though, so I'm not too worried. They're going to take a lot of chip from Burn Rocky Helmet. Take that. Get all my spikes down. Uh, yeah, they're gone. Cool. Pretty good for me. Got a lot of spikes down here. Komodo comes in. I'm going to strength stop you here just because I think you're going to go for your clangorous soul blaze. And I want to live that. Okay, I didn't live. That is strong. Either way, I'm pretty sure Gold Dengo lives a flamethrower. A we gleam kill here. Now the question is, can we kill Dragonite? The answer is, I believe with Corselot, yes we can. No matter what they go into here, I I think I straight gleam here. In case I they try and go for a swords dance, which I do not want. Oh, scale shot. That's fine, because you're actually putting yourself in range of Aqua Jet here. Yeah, right, I sack this. Honestly, I feel like I go past Collision. And I agility once, because they're not going to KO me here. It did a decent chunk. Am I faster? I think I am by like a few points. So what's three 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 five? It's like four nine nine. Five hundred. Yeah, I'm faster. We will. Well, Hydro Vortex, which is kind of a strange play. I just don't want to take Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin, Recoil Chip because actually could kill me. And we're gonna head smash you here. Not gonna KO. We'll do a decent chunk. They Dragon Dance, cheeky cheeky cheeky. Wave crush kills. And now the question is, can we beat back Scalibur? I think if I trick it, I can. So I'm going to trick you here. Force you into one move. Loaded dice. Excellent for me, because I'm just going to strength up you forever and ever. Yeah. GG. You need like three cards in a row. And I would have to never click... 
strength up. Nice. Pretty happy with that endgame. Bramble Gas got a lot of work done. The Jawlock was interesting. I think Jawlock's kind of a bad move. I just use Crunch personally. Either way, we'll take those. Alrighty, we have some Mono Bug. Now, unfortunately, Mono Bug's actually a pretty tough matchup just because Volcarona is really, really, really scary for my team. I can try get up stuff early, like my spikes early against the Skelvantula. We're going to spin away their Sticky Web. They Volt Switch immediately. Interesting. Interesting. Into what, though? If they go... Okay, they go into Fortress. I guess I'm going to get my spikes up here. Applying pressure to the Caesar and the Cleavor is pretty good for me. The Volt Switch. Gotcha. Not ideal. I mean, one spike is fine. One spike's not bad. I want more. It's just, what do I do against Volcarona? Cleaver comes in. I'm going to try Strength Sap you. I'm faster. Are you banded? Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to spin these away. No. Come on, please Strength Sap. Please work. Please hit. Nice. The U turn out. Probably into Volk, right? I guess I am playing with rocks up this game. I'm going to try spin here. Hey, the end of forfeiting. I don't know why. I mean, when this goes down, I would have gone into my Basque Legion. I don't think they necessarily have a swap into Basque Legion. Like, if they go into rock, when did I head smash afterwards, which is pretty good, so pretty nice for me. Alrighty, we have another game that's Mono Bug. Uh, this time I probably actually have to do with Corsola, which I hate. It's not Corsola, Volcarona, which I hate. I'm getting my spikes up early. You can rev if you want. I do not care. Um, Toxic? I kind of care about that. That's kind of annoying for me. Either way. We can last a bit of time here. Leech life doesn't do too much. Other no, I didn't mean to infest. I'm into strength up. It doesn't matter because I died there. I'm going to go you. And I'm going to click head smash here. Nice. Big threat taken care of. Obviously, like something like Galvantula could come in here. You come in. I've lost my ability to use rapid spin, which sucks, but they can't either. Oh no. Toxic Spike's actually really bad for me. Toxic Spike is really, really bad for me. I think I just have to keep whittling this down. It's still not an impossible endgame. But it got a lot harder than it needs to. Volcarona comes in. See, now I just need to Nightshade over and over again. Obviously, this will go down eventually. Are you like Roost or something? Well, you don't seem to be a bulky bug, Volcarona. So let's suck gold here. To a fiery dance, we take in Basque Legion, we Aqua Jet. Nice, okay. That's kind of all I wanted from this interaction. Now, both are still scary. I can't get toxic on Corsola though. So honestly, I think that T wave was. In my opinion, a misplay. You're still scary. I'm going to wave or Hydro Vortex you. Crit. I don't know if that mattered. I don't care to find out either. No, don't get full powered. Nice. Nice. Okay. That's a big save for me. Galvantula comes in. We'll burn. Not going to do a huge amount, so let's go mimic you. I think I have to keep Corsola healthy. Corsola should win me the game. You know what? I'm going to SD here. Any kind of like pressure I can apply right now. Scolipede, assuming it's not boots, is going to take a huge chunk. This is fine. Decent damage. Rock slide. We go Corsola. And I think we strength up forever. Don't flinch. Okay. Again, I think I just strength up forever. 
I don't see a world where... Ah, oh, the crit hurts there. I don't really see a world here where Squillipede wins. Especially not when this has a struggle. Cool. If it's SD... It could suck for me. Yeah, it's SD. Come on, burn. Nice. I guess I just Nightshade here, right? I just need to survive one, which I definitely do. Easily. Yeah, we easily win this. Corsola is so good. Corsola is another Pokemon I experimented not using on the team, but I just really could not not use it. It's so insanely amazing. GG. Do I get to 1600 yet? Ah, oh, so close. I kind of want to try M for 1600 this video. Okay, here we are against Mono Steel. Tough enough matchup, but definitely winnable all the same. I like Blissephon a lot here. I think I'm going to open up Goldengo. Or do I open up Corsola? I'll open up Corsola. Because I can burn something early. Or if they open up with Orthworm, I can just go straight for a Nightshade and try break its sub. Yeah. That's the play, I think. They open up Heatran. Are you Eruption? I'll Nightshade you just in case. Because Eruption's pretty strong. Now, if I Strength Sap once, this should probably only do like... Maybe 30, 28. The next one's going to be a lot weaker. Also, I got the value of the information that your specs. Or Scarf, sorry. I think it's Scarf. I should really put my new team on this. I keep forgetting to do that. So Corsola, Galar, Defensive Wall, Heatran. Um, eruption. Special attack Heatron. Oh, I'm Max Bidef, actually. 39 to 47. Yeah, so that's. It looks like it's Scarf. Looks like we have this Gudra again. Not too worried about it. It's kind of annoying, but definitely winnable against. Actually, I'm going to try and use this as an opportunity to get down my spikes. Also, I feel like Shelter is such a terrible move. It's literally just Iron Defense, but I think Iron Defense has more PP, so there's no reason to ever use Shelter. The rest... I think... I completely wall you with Mimikyu. But I have to see what your last move is. Cool. We trap Caesar. That is far from bad. I'm gonna get one more infestation up here. They roost. Ah, roost kind of annoying. I got my spike up. Ah, they're defog. Interesting. So you're not SD? Or are you just SD bullet punch? Kind of a weird set. Does a lot though. But it's okay because I got a spike up. Goldengo comes in here and clicks Shadow Ball. You don't KO me. You can't really go to Heatran for free. And this spike is staying up. And by the looks of it, I completely wall Gudra with my Mimikyu. You can't defog me. I'm just going to spam Shadow Ball. I do not care. Nice. Spadef drop there is nice. You're forced to swap out. Something is eating this. You know what? I'm going to plot up. Because your team is really, really weak to me. Now, obviously, Heatran can come in pretty nicely. Dragon Post is 14. That's so weak. Heatran comes in. Does take a decent bit thanks to the spike. And we're going to go Basque Legion here. Scout their intention. Could be Earth Power. Overheat. Interesting. They get a fair Earth here. Let's go back into Goldengo. Goldengo is pretty nice against this. Uh, I, I'm going to plot once. Okay, they go back into Heatran. I don't value Basque Legion in this game at all, just because it's quite weak to quite a few things. 
mainly is Ferrothorn. Yeah, see the Ferrothorn there's annoying. Oh, Hydro Vortex. They probably swap to Ferrothorn. Now Ferrothorn's an issue for me. Oh, they go to Orthworm. Interesting. I'm okay with damaging this. If I prevent you from getting up. Oh no, there's Citrus. That's so bad for me. At least it dies when it comes back in. Now you're probably like Z Celebrate. It's definitely special anyway, Charge Beam. Yikes. This is bad for me. Right, we have to go Blacephalon. Click Shadow Ball. I guess Mimikyu's still really good in this position in the game. Yeah, you're Z Happy Hour. And you go for a stored power here. How do I not lose this endgame? I guess I sack this. I'm still faster, which is surprising. Stored power obviously KOs, Mimikyu comes in, sneaks. Does a decent chunk. Pretty good. Orthworm dies. Caesar is kind of a threat. I guess Goldengo is always pretty good against it. And they don't have like free swaps forever. Now Heatran's scary. But I think Corsola can come in here. And if I get my rocks down, it really limits how many times Heatran can come in again. I think Goldengo is my answer to this game. I'm going to Wisp you. Just in case you're like knockoff or something. Rocks. I'll get my own rocks down here. Seed. Uh, I'm going to go Goldengo. I'll plot once. Because you can't defog here. I wall out your Pharaoh, I wall out your Caesar. I don't wall out your Heatron. But you have very limited swap in Heatron, yes. Because it's going to about to take a lot here. I go into Corsola. Geo Blade. I think that's game. Because that's disabled. It has to struggle here, right? I plot up once. Pharaoh comes in on this and does Shadow Ball, if not two Shadow Balls. Nice. And we made it to 1610. Pretty happy with that. Where's this Landos here? Probably like top 100, maybe like around 80. Oh, higher than I thought. Number 24 in letter. Not bad. Um, My GXE is very low on this type. I will tell you what, I was up till 3 o'clock in the morning testing this team like two or three nights ago. It was, it was rough. Like I was testing for ages. I tried so many different combinations. I just was not happy with the team. Then I decided, no, I'm going to go for a fire, grass, water core, like, you know, back in the Gen 4 days with Blasef and uh, the Tumbleweed, whose name I forget, and uh, Basque Legion. I thought the offensive pressure actually worked really well with Ghost. I think it plays more into, it's kind of like a type two extremes. It has like the bulky core of um, Bramble Gas, that's his name, and Corsola. And there are some offensive powerhouses with like, uh, Basque Legion, uh, Goldengo, and um, Blacephalon. So definitely a very unique type. I kind of tried a lot of unique things, but yeah, no, they did not work out. It went for the tried and true powerful ghost. So worked out pretty well. Pretty happy with 1610. I think it peaked around that um, at my highest peak with the team. I think I think it was 1615 was the absolute highest peak, which is only a few points higher on the ladder. Either way, I definitely enjoyed it. Really, really fun type. A lot more than I thought I would. I was kind of worried about playing this type because it's a good type and I... I felt like the pressure was on for me to achieve, especially after the Monosteel video, which I thought was maybe a bit sloppy. I definitely made a lot of mistakes in editing and in actually playing the game, so definitely happy how this one turned out. Anyway, enough rambling for me. If you enjoyed, leave me a like, a comment, or subscribe it helps me out so much as a small creator. Trust me, I really do appreciate it. Every time someone comments on the video, I do read them. I know I'm quite slow at getting back to people. I like to let them build up and get back to them all at once, but it always puts a smile on my face every time I see a new comment on one of my videos. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, only two types left. Uh, flying and fire. Need to pull out all stuff for those. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that. Maybe I'll play Generation 9. Maybe I'll go back and play all the Natex types. I'm not sure. 
Either way, I look forward to it. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. Catch you next time, everyone. Take care.